Hello, and welcome to Empowered Learning. This video will be about parallel and perpendicular lines. So the concepts that we want to go over is what are parallel and perpendicular lines? What does the equation of parallel and perpendicular lines have in common with its given line? And we want to go over strategies for how to find the equation of a parallel and or perpendicular line given an original equation of a line. So to start off, we see that we have some line L. And you can see that this line L here has a positive slope. Now, we see that line A, which is right here, is parallel to line L. And we see that line B, which is right here, is perpendicular to line L. And sometimes perpendicular is called normal to line L. Now, what it means to be parallel means that uh, the two lines will never intersect one another, which means that they will end up having the same slope or the same rise, uh, quotient of rise to run. When a line is perpendicular, like in line B, that means that it is intersecting um, the given line L at a 90 degree angle. Now, as far as equations of lines are concerned, we know that when we have two lines that are parallel, those slopes are exactly the same. And so that's why you see down at the bottom there, M1 is equal to M2, where M1 means the slope of the given line or one of the lines, and M2 is going to be the slope of the other line. And so another way that we can put this is we can say if this is the slope of the given line, then this will be the slope of the line that's parallel to it. For perpendicular lines, we know that since they are um, two lines that intersect at a 90 degree angle, um, the product of those two slopes would end up equaling negative one. So um, if I put this one way, Let's say we have a uh, slope for the first line, slope for the second line. That product will always be negative 1. The way that I've expressed it here is I've let M1 be the original, and I let M2 be the perpendicular line. And of course, um, what we really want to know is, is given the equation, well, given the equation of a line and we know what its slope is, then... Uh, we know that the perpendicular line is its slope is going to be the negative reciprocal. So that's why I have it written this way, because uh, it's easy to remember. Now, just to give you an example of what a negative reciprocal is, just in case you don't quite get that. So let's say you had a line and its slope is 2. Then we know that the negative reciprocal of 2 is going to be negative 1 half. Because, of course, if we take 2 and divide it by 1, the reciprocal of that is 1 half, meaning that we flip the fraction. And then, of course, the negative is we just multiply by a negative 1. So that would be an example of having a slope and then finding this negative reciprocal. Another example would be, let's say that the original line has a slope of uh, negative 3 halves then that means that the negative reciprocal would be a positive two-thirds. And again, um, we would take negative two-thirds, sorry, negative three-halves, and we would flip it, which would be a negative two-thirds, and then multiply negative two-thirds by negative one, which would give us positive. So that's how we would get um, those slopes there. All right, so let's go ahead and move on and try to uh, look at some examples here. And so we want to determine if the following lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. And so remember that if lines are parallel, they have the same slope. And if they are perpendicular, then the slopes are negative reciprocals of each other. So for our first pair of equations here, we see that 
This is in slope intercept form, so we can just look here to find out the slope of the first line. For the second one, we see that we have this in standard form. And of course, um, one way that you could translate this back into slope intercept form here is just to subtract 2x from both sides. Okay, and so you would see that. Now, um, another way that we could do this is we could also use the fact that whenever we have an equation of a line in this form, that when we solve for y, it will always end up looking like this, where uh, this part here is the slope, and this part here is the y-intercept from the slope-intercept form. So if we know that, then of course here I could have also said this is going to be a negative 2 divided by 1, where 2 is the number next to the x, and the understood 1 that is right here is the number or coefficient next to the y. And you see we still get negative 2 there. So when we look at these, we know that these slopes are not the same, but we also know that they are, are not negative reciprocals of each other. Because if they were negative reciprocals, then this would be a negative one half as a result. Okay? So because of that, we know that for these two lines, these two lines are neither parallel nor perpendicular. Okay? So we'll just put neither for that case. For example B, we see that we have two vertical lines. And if you remember, a vertical line um, has an infinite slope or an undefined slope. And so we'll just say infinite in this case. But um, the next line, x equals 5, is also vertical, which means it has an infinite slope. And so since the slopes are uh, technically the same, we know that these are going to be parallel to one another. Move on to our next examples. For example, C, um, we look here and we see that we have x equals 5, and that is a vertical line, and y equals negative 3, that is a horizontal line. So by definition here, the slope of this is infinite, or if we can put it one way, 1 divided by 0 is a way to think about it. And the slope of a horizontal line is going to be 0, or we can look at it as 0 over 1. And so um, here, of course, we could think of this as a positive or negative 1 divided by 0. But, of course, just using common sense here, we see that, hey, these two lines are going to be intersecting each other at a 90 degree angle. So because of that, we're going to say that the slopes are perpendicular to one another. All right. So for example, D, we see that we have two equations of a line, uh, both in standard form. So remembering what we talked about up here, we could just look at the a, b, and c coefficients, or in particular just a and b, to figure out what the slope is. So in doing that, let's go back here. So in doing that, we see that for the first line, this is the a, which is 2, so we'll say negative of 2 divided by b, which is 3. And for the second line, we have a 3 here, so we're going to say the negative of 3 divided by b, which is a negative 2, which ends up being a positive 2, which yields us 3 halves. So if we look at the slope of the first line and the slope of the second line, we'll see that they are negative reciprocals of each other. And we know that because when we multiply these two slopes, 
we're going to get a negative one. Okay. And of course, we could reduce here, but I'll just go ahead and um, multiply straight across and show you that it definitely ends up being negative one. So, of course, this is going to be perpendicular again. And for this last example, uh, of course, for this first line, our slope is a negative one third. And for the second line, if we use what we know about the standard form and its formula for the slope, just by looking at it, we will get this. And of course, these two uh, have no relationship with one another. So we would say that this is neither. So let's go ahead and move on to some other examples where uh, we'll have to find an equation of a, a line that is both parallel and perpendicular to a given one. So our first example here is we have the point 3, 5, and we have the equation of the line 2 sevenths y equals 2 sevenths x plus 1. And so graphically, what we're trying to do is this. We have some line y equals 2 2 sevenths x plus 1, which kind of looks like this. And what we want to find is, is a line that is parallel to it. And let's say it'll kind of look like this, parallel to it, that goes through the point here. And I'll just call it point A, where point A is equal to 3, 5. And we also want a line that is perpendicular to it, like this going through that same point. So we'll say that this is our parallel line, line A, and this is our perpendicular line, line B. So we're trying to find the equations of the line um, for little a and little b given line big L. And so the, the first thing that we see here is that if we're going to find a parallel line, that the slopes have to be the same here, okay? So we say that the new equation that we're going to find, if it's parallel, has to have same slope, sorry, yeah, same slope. And then after that, we use the slope and this point here to find it. Now notice that in this example, I am using the slope intercept form in order to find the y-intercept to complete finding the equation of a line. And over here, for the perpendicular one, I've used the point slope form. It does not matter which one you use. Um, I'm only doing this to showcase that uh, both methods can be used to find uh, the answers that you need. Okay, So you, we could have very well did this backwards and did this one with the point slope and did this one with the slope intercept form. And we still would have came up with the same answers. Um, we also could have just did all slope-intercept form to find the equations of a line, and we could have also did all point-slope form to find the equation of a line. Same thing. Okay. So again, just remember this is just to showcase the two different strategies of trying to find the equation of a line. So we're looking here, and we have our slope of positive two sevenths goes to that point. So for here. What we do is just label this X, label that Y, and plug in everything that we know. And we see that the only thing that we don't know here is B, which is the number representing the, the Y intercept. So we just solve for B in this case. And of course, um, we take the 3, that's like 3 divided by 1, multiply numerator with numerator, denominator with denominator. And then from there, um, if you don't like dealing with fractions, you can multiply both sides of your equation here by the LCD, which in this case is 7, since that's the only denominator. And then from there, um, we see we just have 35 equals 6 plus 7B. And of course, we know that when we multiply here, the 7s reduce to 1. And of course, um, when we multiply here, that's just 7B. 
then you just subtract 6 from both sides and divide by 7. And we get our y-intercept. So this would be the equation of a line for little a that we saw above, which is the one that was parallel to the given line. And of course, uh, just to remind you, the given line was this one. All right, so for the perpendicular line, uh, we know that if we're going to find the slope of, of the perpendicular line, we have to do the negative reciprocal, okay? So here I've wrote this out the long way so you can see mathematically how we do that. But in short, if our given line was 2 sevenths, then the negative reciprocal of that would be just this flipped and then multiply by a negative 1. So we use that along with point again, and this time we're doing the point slope form. So we plug in our slope here, and we label that x1, y1, and plug in accordingly. And so then from that point, it's just a bunch of algebraic manipulation. And so um, in doing that, you know, we get y minus 5 is equal to uh, negative 7 halves times x minus 3. And then, of course, here I'm, I'm multiplying through. Um, we're going to come over here to the side here and rework this, um, especially for you people that don't necessarily like to deal with fractions. If you want to find a way to get out of that, um, I can show you. So for here, uh, what we could do at this point is to multiply both sides of our equation of the line by, a, by the LCD, which in this case is 2. So we can just say 2 times y minus 5 here. We'll say 2, and that is negative 7 halves, and then this is x minus 3, like that. And of course, here this would be 2y minus 10. And over here, when we multiply this, since we have 2 multiplied by negative 7 halves multiplied by x minus 3, we only need to multiply the 2 by the negative 7 halves. And of course, that will give us just negative 7, and then all that can still be multiplied by x minus 3. So, in doing that, we distribute our negative 7 to both terms there. So, if we do that, we end up with negative 7 plus 21, because we know a negative 7 times a negative 3 is a positive 21. And then, of course, from this point, we're just trying to basically solve for y. So we add 10 to both sides. And then from there, we divide both sides by 2. And we see we get a negative 7 halves x plus 31 over 2. And you see we get the same thing either way. All right, so now let's work some examples on our own here. So here we have our point and we have our line. And from that, the main thing that we need is we need what the slope of the line is. And so here, since it's in standard form, we can just look at our A and our B and figure that out. So the slope of that line will be a negative 3 fourths. So if we're trying to find the parallel line, then we know that the slope of the parallel line has to be the same as the given line. And we know that we have to use this point here. Okay, So for this time, I'm going to use the point-slope form in order to find the equation of a line there. So here we'll label this x1, y1, and we'll go ahead and substitute in. So this is a negative 2. This is our slope. And here we see uh, x minus x1 is 3. Okay. Now, one thing I do want to point out, and I know I've seen some students do this, is some students tend to think that you have to plug in something for y here and something for x here in this form of the equation of a line. And that's not true. Um, if we were using the slope-intercept form, 
like how I'm going to do next, then we would need to plug in X and Y here. But we only need to plug in something for X1 and X2 here. And that's why we have these subscripts here to let you know, hey, that's where you need to plug in your X and Y coordinates for a point. Okay. So let's get rid of all of this stuff and continue on. So now at this point, uh, we know that subtracting negative is the same as addition. And just like how we did last time, we can multiply both sides of our equation by the LCD. And in this case, that is 4. So now that will give us 4y plus 8 over here. And of course, this 4 can just be multiplied by that fraction there to give us a negative 3 times x minus 3. And then from that point, um, we can just finish up. So we have 4y plus 8. And then we distribute the negative 3 to both terms there. And remember that a negative times a negative is a positive. And then we'll come here and finish up. So um, here we need to get y by itself. So we need to subtract 8 from both sides. And of course that cancels. And we just have 4y equals negative 3x plus 1. And then we just divide both sides by 4. And we see that this is what our parallel line is. It is just negative 3 fourths x plus 1 fourth. Okay. So what we'll go ahead and do is record that and now solve for the perpendicular line to give us a little bit more room. So we'll come here and just say for the parallel line, we had y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 1 fourth. Okay. <clears throat> so now we'll come here and get rid of all of this and start over. All right, so for the perpendicular line, we'll go ahead and do the same thing. Um, we know that for this time, we need to have the negative reciprocal. And so the negative reciprocal of negative 3 fourths is a positive 4 over 3. And we will note here that the point we're still using is the point 3, negative 2. And so this time I'm going to use the slope-intercept form of an equation of a line to figure this out. So if we do this, we label that x, label that y, and we just plug in what we know, which this is going to be negative 2 equals 4 thirds times 3 and plus b. Because that's the only thing that we don't know. Now, of course, 4 thirds times 3 gives us 4 because we see that we could think of this as 3 divided by 1 here. And of course, those threes reduce to one. So we just got four times one divided by one times one, which is just four. And of course, to get B by itself, we subtract four from both sides. And we see that B is equal to negative six, and that is what our y-intercept is. So when we come write our equation now, we know that that's going to be y equals four thirds x minus 6. And that is what our perpendicular line will be. Okay. So we have some given line, negative 3 fourths, which looks something like this. And our parallel line is going to be uh, 1. And let's see how it looks here. Our parallel line is going to be, so this is 5 over 4, so that's 1.25. So this line is lower than that one. So uh, a parallel line looks like this. 
and our perpendicular line, of course, um, will look like this. And of course, here, this is the point three, negative two, that both lines go through. So graphically, that's what we're doing there. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to our next example. And so you see that for C, we have a point uh, three, negative three, but we have the given line, which is X equals negative one. And of course, the slope for that is infinite. So that means if we're trying to find a line that is perpendicular to it, it's just going to be zero. Okay, because remember we kind of look at infinite as being one divided by zero. Um, because we know this is undefined. Just like infinity is an undefined real number because it's really not a real number, it's just a concept. So in this case, when we when we see this, we have the line that is going to be uh, per perpendicular to this is going to be horizontal because we know horizontal lines have a slope of zero and the line that's going to be parallel to it is going to be uh, vertical as well. So easy way to remember this is that X goes with vertical, Y goes with horizontal. So for the parallel line, all we need is the vertical line in this case that goes through this particular point and so a vertical line will, will have to have points that have all the same x-intercept so it would look like this um, and i'll go ahead and draw this so that you can see what i'm talking about here so this would be the point uh, three negative three and so here let's say we were going to plot this point so uh, let's say we go three on the x-axis and down three on the y, we would be here. So that would be our point three, negative three. And we have some line going through that, okay? Now our original line is over here, which is the line x equals negative one. So this is the original line that we had here. This would be the line that is parallel to this one. Um, so we'll name that the big L again, and it's the little A. So this is the line that is parallel to this one that goes through that point. And of course, that would just be X equals three. Now for the line that's perpendicular to it, it would have to go through here, but horizontal. So it would have to look like that. And of course, that line, since it's horizontal, is y equals whatever the y coordinate is, which is a negative three. And so now you can see that whenever you have parallel or perpendicular uh, given lines, to be able to find, uh, well, whenever you're given a line that is vertical or horizontal, I should say, and we're asked to find parallel and perpendicular lines, it is relatively easy to find because all we really have to do is just use a little common sense, draw the graphs out, and remember what um, the equations of a vertical and horizontal line are. And so same thing with the example D here. We see that we are asked to find a line that is parallel and perpendicular to the horizontal line here, y equals negative one. So we know that lines that are parallel and horizontal uh, lines are also horizontal. And we know that lines that are perpendicular to horizontal lines are vertical. So if you see here, using the same kind of a convention, that vertical lines go through the x coordinate, horizontal lines go through the y coordinate. So if we want to find a line parallel to y equals 1, then that would be um, going through this point, that would be the horizontal line uh, y equals negative 5, and perpendicular would be perpendicular to y equals negative one is going to be a vertical line passing through this point, which would be x equals four. So uh, this concludes the examples for um, parallel and perpendicular lines. Um, I hope this helped. 
and please watch my next video.